G'day guys, my name is CJ. Let's talk smartwatches. This is the Amazfit GTR2e, and for 2021, it might just be the best bang for your buck smartwatch. Let's take a look. So Amazfit by Huami as a brand is focused on selling budget oriented smart wearables ranging from simple fitness trackers to smart watches. The GTR2e is the essential version or base model if you want and it's a really interesting product because when it comes down to it, it's actually a really simple product and it kind of just fits into your life once you get started. Kind of like slipping into an old pair of jeans. And in a smart wearable, that's essential, no pun intended. To start with, it's a really elegant looking watch. It's a round timepiece with a really nice looking 1.4 inch AMOLED display. It's got bright, vibrant colors with a pixel density of 326, making it nice and sharp as well. It's a really good display. All around, it's got slimish bezels that have lines indicating the typical location of numbers on a watch face too. Now the version I've got is the obsidian black color with an aluminum body and it looks and feels really nice kind of channels a real Galaxy Watch kind of vibe. It's not too heavy either, so that's gonna be great for day-to-day -day comfort. On the sides, you've got two buttons, one to access the app menu and the other as a custom shortcut button to an app of your choosing. More of that later, but they're nice and tactile enough. On the underside, you've got a matte black plastic bottom hard shell housing the pulse oximeter that detects both heart rate and oxygen levels, which is a step up from the last model. And the whole unit is stuck together really well. It has five atmospheres of water resistance, so it'll be perfectly fine for swimming or if you're caught in the rain. Now, Amazfit are really doubling down on using it as a fitness tracker, and it's upped its supported sport modes from 12 in the original one all the way up to 90, meaning it's quite a lot smarter and knows how to accurately track activity with the wider range of exercises. Now, it also uses an easily swappable 22 millimeter silicon strap, which is really comfortable on the wrist and perfect for use when exercising. But overall, the GTR2E's design provides a nice balance of being solid and a premium enough feel whilst being pretty comfortable for long periods of use, of which it does really well. Because like its predecessor, battery life is its biggest strength. Now, the combination of a 471 milliamp hour battery and the power sippingly frugal real-time OS kind of like the one you see with the OnePlus watch and many other Chinese smartwatches, means it can last up to 45 days. Yeah, four, five. I mean, you have to turn most settings off and use it at its most basic to reach that sort of level, but at least gives a decent bit of headroom, even with 24 seven heart rate tracking and three 30 minute workout per week, Kwame state it can last up to 24 days. Again, it'd have to be in absolutely ideal settings, but it gives you an idea of how long it can last, which is massive. Now for me, a mixture of settings for regular heart rate and oxygen monitoring and a basic always on display, I could use it for a solid week to two weeks before getting even close to needing a charge. Now if you're someone that uses it for sleep tracking as well, then it'll chew through battery a little bit quicker. And then if you need to charge it, two and a half hours of charge will bring it all the way back up to 100, so it's pretty quick. It uses the exact same magnetic adapter from previous models and it snaps on really reliably, so that's great. But let's talk about the actual experience of using it. As I mentioned before, the GTR2e uses a version of real-time OS, a basic bit of software that's actually used in a whole heap of different electronic applications, such as online booking systems, cardiac pacemakers, and even radar systems on aircraft carriers. It's very basic and it's very power efficient without needing any super special hardware or RAM requirements. So that makes it really suitable for smartwatches. It's also why you get these really basic smartwatches with really nice AMOLED displays because all the money you save from using lower power chips and memory means you have cash to throw into the display. And that makes a lot of sense considering the screen is pretty much all you look at in a smartwatch. Now the overall UI structure mirrors the basic functionality you see with Wear OS. And I mean basic. Sideswipes gives you cards showing information like weather, 
your heart rate, personal activity intelligence widgets, oxygen saturations, your music controller, so on and so forth. A downswipe shows you a basic control center to tweak your brightness, connectivity, and do not disturb mode. A swipe up shows your notifications. The top button triggers the app menu, which you can swipe through. And the lower button can be customized to open an app of choice, whether it be exercise or weather. And that's just as an example. Now in different menus, swiping left to right brings you contextually back one menu and a long press on the clock will give you a choice of other faces and if supported on that specific watch face, you can customize different complications as well. So for such a basic UI, it does give you a decent level of customization. But because it is a basic bit of software, outside of its pre-baked functions, it actually doesn't have any third-party app support. So there's no Spotify or any onboard memory for music full stop. So you'll need to have your phone with you, especially if you listen to music whilst exercising. And with that, there's no Google Maps, no Uber, no NFC for payments or Google Pay, no App Store, and even notification support is basic at best, where you can't even action notifications if you wanted to. You can clear them, but you can't reply or you can't do anything useful with them. Now navigating the UI is also not the smoothest. It's not laggy per se, and apps do load quite quickly, but the frame rate looks like it's locked at 24 frames per second or less, which I feel does cheapen the experience a bit. I would have been a lot happier if it was able to achieve a smoother 60 frames per second, and it would go a long way to help make your watch feel that much more premium. And speaking of feeling premium, or lack of, the watch's vibration motor is plucked straight from 2015. It's got one strength, weak and it's very buzzy. It does the job to get your attention and if you don't feel it, well you probably hear it. The vibrations that is, because there's no onboard speaker either so don't expect any sound for calls, music or notifications. Now it needs to connect to a phone to be set up via Huami's own Zep app and that stores all the health and fitness tracking data too so you can observe how much you've slept and how much you've moved. It also provides some very basic information and suggestions about what you can do to improve your health and fitness, which is nice and all, but it's not extensive by any means, and nor does it provide any major groundbreaking insights either. It's also via the Zep app you can customize and download different watch faces. Now there's a nice mixture of modern and functional faces with a choice of into the hundreds, which is nice, and you'll definitely find one that suits you, but you'll basically be relying on Kwame's ecosystem. Now it retails in Australia for around $180 to $190 or about $129 US dollars, which is super value in the grand scheme of smartwatches. To get a long lasting smartwatch that can track up to 90 sport modes, including swimming, has an oximeter for oxygen saturation, handle notifications, control music, and have a premium AMOLED display and look good doing so. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome package if you ask me especially if you don't really need third-party apps, which I reckon most people wouldn't actually need. I mean, think about it. If you own one or know someone who owns an older Apple Watch, Galaxy Gear, or Wear OS Watch, when was the last time you actually relied on a specific third-party app on the watch? Other than using built-in NFC for payments, the other main functions people typically use a smartwatch for is for fitness tracking, telling the time, and getting notifications and the GTR 2E does all of this for a fraction of the price. So what do you think of the GTR 2E? Is this something you'd be keen on using or trying? If so, I'll leave some affiliate links in the description below and any purchases made through these will go towards helping develop this channel. Otherwise, are there any other smartwatches you'd like me to check out or compare? Let me know in the comments below and hit me up in the socials too. Thanks again for watching guys. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, remember to ding the notification bell so you don't miss out. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, say good day, mum, for me. Cheers.